Hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea. I'm Gloria. And I'm Rosetta. And as we always start our chats, it's in the spirit of love and kindness. We want to be compassionate, loving, and caring to one another. Our planet needs it a lot right now. Thank you, thank you. And hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another one of our chats. We really appreciate you coming on and checking us out from week to week. And if you wouldn't mind, we would ask for a great favor to hit that thumb icon to say you liked our videos, to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump into it. And today we're drinking something called Lloyd the Magic Experience Tea and it's called yes. Juicy Lemon. Yes. Juicy Lemon. Yes. Sounds so and good. That way you can tell what's in it. Oh, so what's in it? Ginger, <laughs> honey, lemon, black pepper. That's right. There the you activator. go. There you go. Which I did not know until we started doing teas. All right. There you go. And we've had okay. it seeping. Okay. Very good. I love it. Let's smell it. Let's wake it up some. Ooh, it smells of lemon and honey. Oh, it does. It smells of, you know what it reminds me of? Growing up, we used to have these cough mm. drops, lemon and honey cough drops. Yes. And that's what it smells yes, of. Yes, it does. Not the uh, mythylatum versions, but just the lemon honey. Honey, yeah. Yes. Cheers. 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 Cheers, everyone. Ooh, that's good. Good flavor. Nice. It tastes as good as it smells. Yeah, that's, that's we want the, the lemon and yes. we want the honey. Mm. Wow, that reminds me of like when I was growing up in England, I used to have these honey and lemon cough drops. I forget the name. I think it tastes that's, just like it. I love it. I love it. So as we said, our thoughts and prayers go out to the universe. We have got to love to love, we have got to learn to love one another, irregardless of race. We have got to learn that collaboratively we can do great things together. And separation will lead to the destruction of our lives as we know and love it. So let's just focus on love and being with one another. That's what I want to do. So our general focus of uh, our chat last week and this week is to talk about our children. It amazes me how kids are being raised today where acting out is sort of like acceptable. Um, parents are not parenting from the standpoint of when you raise a child, back in the day when we were kids, our parents felt responsible for us and our livelihoods. And they would tell us what we could and could not do. Today, it's starting to look like children are kind of free will. And what I mean by that, our children are now starting to demonstrate illnesses that you don't get as a child. You normally don't get until you're a senior citizen. They're coming out with cases of diabetes, high blood pressure and hypertension. Um, they are figuring out that we can be walking around with symptoms that we think is nothing and it turns out to be something very serious. So last week on Good Morning America, Robin Roberts sat down with Michael Strahan and his daughter, Isabella. She was diagnosed with, um, what was that? A brain tumor known as medulloblastoma. It's a form of brain cancer. And it was at the back of her, you know, if you take your hand around the middle of your neck and go straight up, that's where the medulla is. And what happened is she just had a headache. She thought, you know, I'm in college, it's stress, you know, midterms are coming up, it's just life. And up until she had symptoms where she started getting sick and throwing up, they didn't think very much. They found out that she had a fast growing small tumor, fast growing. So 
you can see when um, Robin Robert does the interview, but Michael Strahan is sitting there holding his daughter's hand. And, you know, he, he was like, it, it was just devastating to watch my child go through this. Think about it. Mike is, you know, he's not doing too bad for himself. He's got a lot of money, so he could throw a lot of good doctors into the situation. Sometimes money isn't everything. Exactly. And you've heard me saying this a lot of times. If you don't have your health, wealth doesn't mean anything. But to that point, kids nowadays are being diagnosed. And it's a higher chance of kids being diagnosed because of like brain, brain cancer. Right. Right. A lot of stress, anxiety, mental health issues. Right. Because our society today is putting kids in a situation why it's too much stress. Right. Always on your cell phones, your laptops, your wireless devices. There's too much, um, I, I say it's too much of trying to be like the next door neighbor right. kind of thing. Trying to keep, keep up, up with, with the, the Joneses. Joneses. <laughs> exactly. Keep up with the Joneses. Yes. But what we mean by that is keeping up with everyone out there that's on social media. Right. All these young kids see other young kids on right. social media being influencers, making so much money right. that they need to catch up to them. Right. They feel that they're getting anxious and stressed out if they're not posting right. how many times a day, right. if they're not following, if they don't have so many followers, so many likes. It, it's like, tell you nowadays, kids are actually on their cell phones younger and younger every day you yes. see them when you go out to restaurants yes. parents are giving the kids to distract them yes. as young as like one and a half years old yes i mean they they come almost like stepping out of the womb with pads you know and you see the babies like we used to give kids in well in the restaurant you we didn't give you toys to play with you know you were there to eat if you were too small we would put you to sleep before we got to the restaurant and you would just be in the little, you know, I had a little carrier and I could just tap it and it would kind of just, just enough to keep the baby asleep. But we didn't, we, we made sure that the kids were part of the conversations. And I think because every time a child sees another child with something, they want it and they want to do what they're doing. Well, I think it's laziness on behalf of the parents yeah because parents don't want to have to be there to distract the child and do activities with the child like we used to when my son was growing up we would have like toys or coloring right. colors right or you know you go to some restaurants they'll give you like a uh, coloring paper or some oh, yeah, activities the on there with crayons yeah, the and menu. things like that yeah. but parents they just want to have adult conversations with other adults and not have the child distract them. So right. there they are giving them the cell phone. Oh, this is what we give just when we go out so we can distract the child on their cell phone. But don't you know, parents, that this is actually very unhealthy for our children. Very unhealthy. Too much screen time, all that, uh, all those bad electromagnetic frequencies emitting yes. from these wireless technologies. Our kids' brains are not formed until they're 25. So they're actually absorbing way more in the brain and in their body than yeah. humans. Ten times more in the body and two to three times more in their brain than adults do. Right. So it, it, it's, it's just very detrimental. So today, right, today, um, at the, what is it called? The, ta, 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 I know I wrote it down somewhere. And, oh. It's called the Senate Judiciary Committee. There's a meeting going on today. Five CEOs are going to testify. The CEO of Snapchat, TikTok, Meta, Discord, and X. Mm. TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, because Facebook and Instagram is two companies. I mean, one CEO, but right. two companies. Um, they volunteered to go in front of, <coughs> bless you. Bless you, excuse bless me, you. everyone. Bless you. Um, volunteered to go in front of the committee and um, be interviewed. Right. Um, while X, Discard, and Snapchat, Snapchat were in court by subpoena. They had to send them a subpoena to get them to come to court. Okay. Now, 
what they're there to do is to talk about what's going on with children. Now, there's the CEOs, and then behind them, they're allowing the parents of children who they've lost due to social media. This is more than just the electros. This also has to do with sex trafficking. It has to do with depression. It has to do with high levels of anxiety. And, you know, um, I haven't heard the part because um, Mark Zuckerberg was testifying the last time I was listening. And they had just asked him, would he like to address the families of the lost children? Right. This is out of control. If you can create algorithms to cycle people through and make them go and look at something, you can just as easily create algorithms that says content, bad content, delete. Or you could do it the other way and say, just show this certain type of content. Right, and all this negativity, just let it go away. Right. And the, the thing that's really sad is that these are multi-billionaires, so it's not a money thing. I don't know what it's going to take for them to see the error of their ways because, you know, like I, I've bought, I can't tell you how many pair of earbuds I bought. Every time I buy them, they pop out of my ears. So I think that's just a blessing that tells me don't do that. That's just too much. I like the old fashioned ones with the cable yeah, because they're less, you know, intrusive, but most kids that you see, they have earbuds and they have them in their ears all day long. It's hard to actually, as parents, to control that because mm -hmm. it's just what everyone is doing and mm -hmm. they want to be able to watch what they want when they want. And I feel that, you know, remember, when Facebook first came out, everyone, it wasn't like it was today. Their intent was to connect people with other people. It was a connection. Right, for people thing. that they knew. Right, long lost friends, family, family members. Yeah. Right, it wasn't what it is today where you're getting spammed with all these right. ads and commercials. It was to be able to find friends that you may have not connected with in 20 years. Exactly. But now it's, it's turned out to be a whole new game where people are using social media for as many followers, how many followers can I get? Yes. How many likes? Yes. How many videos? Like, you know, within the last, I would say for me, I'm sure it's been longer, within the last probably six months, I've noticed that some people that I'm friends with, mm -hmm. their account, Facebook account has changed so much. Instead of just posting, right. they're doing a lot of reels and right. videos. And I found out that the reason being is if you do reels and you get a lot of views, right. they're going to start paying you. Oh, yeah. If you get on over 100,000 likes or whatever views, then they start monetizing it for you. And, and that's you, on Facebook. And I yeah. didn't know that because one person that I follow, she was always doing videos. Right. And I'm wondering what's up with, I mean, I don't mind, but it's, everything is a video. And I found out. And then one day she goes, Oh, I finally get to monetize. Thank you, everyone, for following me. I was like, it clicked. See, I'm old school. I have not done any reels on Facebook. Right. I don't really know how to do that. Right. So I'm like, now I get it. Yes. And it's like children nowadays are seeing that other people are doing it. Mm -hmm. they're, doing, they're trying to up other people, right. up their game. And it's very stressful, very, right. very stressful. Right. And more and more children at a younger age are now being diagnosed with either mental health issues or brain cancer. Right. So parents, adults, even adults without parents who are coming out with these platforms, like you said, right. we need to be a bit more empathetic of our children, how it's going to affect them. And years ago, I don't know if it's still on, but now I know you have Netflix. Right. There was a show several years ago called Social Dilemma. Okay. So that's a good one if it's still on to go and watch Social Dilemma. Okay. When they were talking about social media and how harmful it was to wow. our young kids. And that was a while ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I found very interesting is, do you know that these social media companies have no liability? So if your child 
is tormented, kidnapped, whatever, on Facebook, there is nothing you can do against Facebook for the loss of your child. Yeah, because that, you know why? They're going to turn it around and they're going to blame the parents. Yeah, they're for say, allowing the child. Yes, they're going to say, well, as a parent, we are only there to offer this platform. Right. You as a parent should be more diligent, maybe mm -hmm. get their password, maybe monitor what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And it always comes back to the parent. Yeah. But as parents, we cannot 24 seven monitor our children. No. There's no way. If there was no opportunity, then there would be nothing of this would happen, right? right. It's an opportunity. Every time someone comes up with a new platform, Snapchat, TikTok, it's an opportunity for right. children to grab onto it and to run with it. Right. So if there is no opportunity, like we didn't have the opportunity growing up, right. none of this would be around. Exactly. I mean, I love it and I hate it. Exactly. Train your children or guide your children how to use social media to their benefit and in a positive way. Yes. That's what I say. I agree. And, you know, um, always remember your house, your rules. If your child is like, you know, you're invading my privacy and it's like, well, we can fix this. I can, I can take this phone and shut it down and you can buy your own phone and then you can do with it what you want. But in my house, my rules. Because if your child has that thing connected to their hip at all times, that's a problem. You can't be living and being texting and doing all of that stuff too. And the most important thing is for your child to live. That's, that's key. Yeah, the main thing is monitor what they're doing on the cell phones limit their exposure to those technology and just teach them how to use it properly because AI is coming out, right? Yes. So we got to use it to our advantage to be able to teach the children how to use it to their advantage. Instead yes. of using it to cheat and to plagiarize, why don't you teach them how to use it to find resources? Right. Or if you're doing some book report how or a report or a thesis, right. how to use right. it to, to get a, uh, as a way to get resources to help you instead of plagiarizing or instead of using it in a negative way. Exactly. And, you know, with AI coming, they're already marketing different resources. You know, your AI driven Microsoft Office, your AI driven, you know, uh, technology on your phone that will help you and guide you. Yeah, yeah, it will, it can. You have to check those URLs. You have to check those email addresses. I just heard today that a wonderful little lady was taken for $2.8 million, her whole entire life savings, because she got a message from her bank. And they these messages look like they're coming from banks like Chase and BMO and you know Wells Fargo and Bank of America, and they are not. And she thought she was working with her bank to save and protect her money. And at the end of the day, it was all gone. So with AI, you're going to have to be even more diligent about what you do. I know. I mean, if you're watching this, we'd like, you know, to chime in. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Especially with all this technology and with our kids them having more like health issues, mental right. health issues, brain cancers, yes. you know, what do you think? I mean, we're never going to be rid of technology. Now. No, there's no way we can get rid of it. No, but we, we could as a nation turn it around and be a bit more diligent on how we present it to our, to our future generations. Right. I can't think of the the guy's name, but he's the guy that was the president of the company who came up with uh, GPT chat. Oh, open chat GPT, yeah. yes. And, and you know, they fired him. And then all of the people that worked at the company said, if he goes, we all go. And um, Microsoft jumped up and said, that's okay. Come work with us. Bring all the people with you to come work with us. The company, you know, rescinded its termination. He was on a talk uh, news talk being interviewed and he said yes I'm a little concerned about AI 
but I want my 14 year old to learn how to use it as a tool. Yes. You know, to not be afraid of the technology, right. but to make sure that the technology improves and advances exactly. our lives, not makes us afraid. So we're gonna kind of keep on this little track. We did it for the entire month of January. Um, if there are things that you know of, or you are like, hey girls, have you ever thought of this? Comment below, let us know, because our children are the most precious resource we have, and we have to protect it. Speaking of which, you know how in the 2022 U.S. Olympics, uh, in figure skating, the United States won silver, but there was a little controversy about the gold winners because they were from Russia, and there was a possible doping issue. So there's a young girl, She's on, she was only 15 at the time, and her name is Camilla Valeva, and she was officially disqualified today for doping by the International Olympic Committee. This is sad in, in multiple situations. It's sad because she was only 15. So you know she didn't wake up and say, oh, I think I'm gonna dope myself right, today. Right. So there has to be some, once again, parental activities going on there. And, and I understand that in some countries, you know, as citizens, you don't have any rights. This is a good wake up call for America because if we keep trotting the way people are acting, we won't have rights over our children. So this is something, once again, tied back to children because she's only 15. That's embarrassing. I'm surprised, and also how long it took for them to come to this, to, to finally figure out that, yeah. it, that she was doping. Yeah, it took a long time. So that was, you know, a little bit of, oh my goodness for me. Um, but the U.S. team is very happy. Uh, it was announced on the Today Show, and the, some of the members are going to go to the Today Show and... Uh, Savannah and Hoda were like, we're going to, you know, we're going to give you that platform, you know, where they get up with the medals yes. and, and the flowers. Yay, I like because, that. Yeah, because they, they didn't get to do it back in 2022. Well, I knew back in 2022 that she was already, I knew what the verdict was going to be. Yeah. Within, in, you know, there was no question, but obviously you had to like had go, to go through, through the cycles. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that part was a little disappointing, but we're moving on. So, you know, we've been talking to you about this is the um, season of award. So the next one uh, coming up is the Grammys on Sunday night. Yes. And Trevor Noah is going to be the host. Trevor, I love him. I, I miss him. I know. It, so that's going to be really good. And uh, I hope everybody's ready because, you know, he is a comedian at heart. So he's going to bring the He's joke. been doing it for the past how many years now? Because yeah. he's been doing it since COVID. Yeah. Remember where they had it when the first one came back? And he did it in this small, mm -hmm. I forget, small venue. And then he did it. I think this is probably like his third time yeah, doing it or something. Time, yeah. yeah. He, he needs to keep doing it because he knows what he's doing. He makes it fun. Yes. And everybody looks forward to him. And he knows he's very, very um, good at making jokes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll be checking that out. And we'll let you know next week. Did we like it? Did we agree? You know, it would really, really warm my heart if the ladies wore a lot of clothes and let the talent be based on their voice. My husband calls it auto-tune. You know how they all kind yes. of sound the same? Yes. And he's like, you know, he goes, could you imagine them trying to tell Aretha Franklin, you know, you got to have all your cookies out. You got to show it your shape. Yeah. And she'd be like, Go uh, could away. you imagine things Gladys in a Gladys Knight? Who yes. else? Yeah. You know, Whitney Houston. Whitney, she used to wear regular clothes. I mean, she didn't have all her, I mean, she was thin, model thin. But, you know, that that just wasn't what it was based on. So I It hope, was based on the voice yes. and even Mariah Carey. She was yes. always elegant looking. Yes. Yeah, until some, well, some of the concerts she did was a bit raunchy, but right. when she, majority of the time, she wore long gowns. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very elegant. And um, it's, it's, I, I know that there's uh, quite a few people up for lots of awards. We went over some of them with you last week. You can check back and see. I just, I want 
I want the musicians to be given the opportunity to just be an artist. Yeah. Not about your looks. It's not about how not about how low can you go. Hello. <laughs> yes. That's right. Twerking. I can twerk to the flow. Who cares? You know, because I I always have a good time with my, you know, my son or my, you know, my nieces, nephews, when we get on the subject of mu real music, because I'm old school. I like real music, you know, and our old school music just spans the test Well, of there time. was an award show recently they had done and they brought back the old schoolers. Remember oh, that? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. brought back uh, the old hip hop, some of the hip hop, some of the urban R&B mm -hmm. artists, and that was really nice. It was excellent. So we'll let you know how that goes and on uh, february 18th the british academy film awards will be held and uh anatomy of a fall the holdovers killer of the flower moon oppenheimer and poor things are some american films that are being considered is bobby in any of that i didn't see barbie but that doesn't mean that by that day she might not be considered. well you know why well, because she might of, because be because of the song of the year. With, oh, uh, okay. Because Barbie was not a thing when I was young in England. We okay. never had Barbie. Okay. I had equivalent called the Cindy doll. We oh, never okay. had Barbie in England. So maybe I don't know how, you know, because everyone grew up with Barbie here. It's a big thing. And how did the Cindy doll look different? Cindy doll was uh, had brunette hair. Gotcha. Not blonde hair. Okay. So that's what we played with Cindy doll. <laughs> Yeah, see, I never heard of a Cindy doll. So that's in, that's interesting. Did you have a Barbie doll or did you have a Cindy doll? I had a Barbie doll and I had placed my Barbie doll in my grandmother's attic. And I think when my uncle sold my grandma's house, my doll was still up in the attic. In the original box, I had that and I had a, a Kathy Chatty doll. Oh, what is that? It was a, a little doll. The doll was almost as big as I was. I had to get on the floor and push it to get it into the oh. bed. And then I'd have to pull on the sheets to climb myself up into bed. But it was called Chatty Cathy because I think it was one of the first talking dolls. Oh, okay. And so, you know, I, I mean, at the time I wasn't thinking of, you know, keeping them. But they became keepsakes for the memories. But oh, wow. they're gone now because wow. we're, we're hearing every day about people are finding keepsakes in their garage that are worth hundreds of thousands. Well, people that actually collect Barbie dolls, let me tell you something, they, if they're in their original box, I'm sure the whole collection will be worth many, many millions of dollars. Absolutely. So, do you have a Barbie doll? Did you collect? Let us know. We will let you know the results of that uh, event. It happens on February 18th, and it'll be interesting to see who's going to go with Prince Williams because Princess Kate had uh, major surgery, her and King Charles. They were in the hospital at the same time. Yeah. And they got, she was in before him and then she got, they both got released on the same day. So it's going to be interesting to see who shows up. I don't know. So as you know, I'm a football girl. I love, love, love football, American football. And I have been watching through the whole year as teams have come up and won or lost. Hmm. So Sunday was a very stressful day because we had the Kansas City Chiefs playing the Baltimore Ravens. Kansas City won. And then we had the 49ers, San Francisco 49ers, playing the Detroit Lions. 49ers won. So, typically, when it comes to the Super Bowl, you know, the tickets could be, you know, two to 3000 a seat. You know, they could be a little expensive. Um, depending on location, hotel rooms go up a little bit, airlines go up a little bit. But let me tell you something. This Super Bowl between the Kansas City Chiefs, which they are hoping Taylor Swift is going to show up because Travis is in the Super Bowl, and our beloved San Francisco 49ers, little Purdy, I want him to win a ring so bad. He is such a beautiful young man. All of a sudden, the tickets are going, these are tickets in the stadium to see the football game itself. 
between $9,800 and $12,500 per seat. In addition to that, the airline tickets to go from here in the Bay Area, plus a hotel room for two nights. So if you fly in Saturday night and then spend Sunday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, fly out Monday, you're gonna spend about $27,000. Now, I love football, but there's no way in the heck I would pay that kind of money to watch something that I can watch in the comfort of my home. Well, I guess die-hard fans of each team, they right. would do that. If they yeah, have season they tickets, they would do that. To me, I don't know. I mean, they would do that because they just like the whole fanfare of going to Vegas. It's Vegas. Right. Right? They just and Vegas is normally reasonable. They have doubled the price of all the rooms in Vegas yeah. because they can. Because they can and because they know a lot of people. It's a high demand. Right. And they know people are going to pay it. There are people, high rollers there. Oh, yeah. So they're not going to miss seeing whichever team they want to support, yes. go there, enjoy themselves in Vegas, gamble some, drink some, have a good Let's old time good there. Food. Good Maybe food. a buffet or a high-end restaurant, enjoy yourself, why not? Yeah. I mean, really, that's nothing if you're a high roller. Yeah, but for me, I would prefer, like one time we went to Vegas and we were able to uh, have dinner in the, they had like a table right next to the kitchen sort of like private where right. the chef would come out and talk to us and we paid i think we paid maybe two thousand for 12 people yeah but you how know? long ago was that my point though it was in vegas it was amazing we had an, an amazing time the food was good the and the pairing with the the wines and the cognac yeah well, i mean you're not it, gonna get it for two thousand yeah not right? anymore but the thing is, is where we were, there were televisions all around. So if I owned property in Vegas, I would, you know, figure out a way to invite people who also wanted to have the experience of my restaurant, not just be there yelling and screaming. There's some place, there's a bar in San Francisco where we live and they are Kansas City Chiefs fans. Right. And 49er fans are not allowed to come into that okay. bar. Okay. So you're right, die hard. You know, I love who I love and I want my team to go all the way. Um, I have always said that I think Taylor Swift is a beautiful young lady. I just think that if they want that relationship to survive, they have to kind of take it out of the front public eye a little bit. Right, right. She has a concert on Saturday night and they're talking about she's going to wrap up the concert in Japan. Wrap up the concert, get on a plane so she can be back at the game to support her man. Wow. And her concerts are about three hours. She's going to be exhausted. So Well, I don't, I don't know how she's going to get there in time because it takes like 12 hours yeah. to yeah. get from Asia to right. over here, 12, 13 hours. Yeah. So yeah. if she finishes her concert like at 10... 11 o'clock well, at night. She'll she'll jump on her charter plane right. and make it, and it'll be in the nick of time, hopefully. Well, what time is the game? It's probably like uh, uh, kickoff is like 3 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if she gets, I mean, she may do it, and if she's doing it for the love of her man, you go, girl. And um, the NFL, they love her because she has made them an additional $30 million. Every... Where Kansas City goes, not only are people coming to the home games, the little Swifties are also following her wherever she goes. Right, right. So as a woman that loves football, I love the fact that young girls are getting interested. I just want you to be interested in the game for the game, not for my Taylor girl Taylor. Swift. I want you to love football for, you know, like I was watching the Baltimore game and their quarterback Jackson threw a pass. And he's running to get away from the people, and the pass comes back down in his hands. That is just poetry in motion for a quarterback to throw a pass and catch it too. Yeah, that that had to be like once in a lifetime kind of an event. So football brings a lot of fun with it. We'll see who wins. 
my husband wants, of course, the 49ers. Everybody around me wants the 49ers. Yeah. And a lot of people, even people who are not real 49er fans, they just want it to go back to being about football. Yeah. And if, if Kansas City wins, it's like, oh, dear God. And because it's 49ers, it seems like Super Bowl is going to be extra special. Yes. Whether you're in Vegas or you're home, because I just feel like, do something more special during yeah. the Super Bowl because it's the 49ers. Absolutely. Support the team. So we've been talking a little bit about weather conditions, what's going on around the world, what's going on just around where we live. Um, and I heard a term, atmospheric river. And that's what they keep talking about. The atmospheric river is going to hit California. It's going to hit California. And what that is, is a, con a combination of rain and wind. Yeah. And right now, they are forecasting rain to start later on today. And we already have the wind. It was windy this morning. And they're talking about the combination. And back in the day, they used to have storm chasers and they'd get in their little trucks and they would try and chase the tornadoes or the hurricanes to see if they could figure out what was causing the weather patterns. Today, they have planes and they fly above the cloud spans. And now they're dropping these little cone devices so that they can read what's going on as they go through the storm down to back down to the ground. And it's just really been interesting to see how technology has evolved because these government scientists are trying to figure out how to protect the planet. How to, because these storms are not going away and they're intensifying. And we have to figure out how to balance it. This gentleman, I mean, he's a scientist, he was so cool. He said, you know, in California, he said we, we didn't have enough rain, we were in drought, and then we got too much rain and now we got flooding. He goes, so it's not about you know, we need rain. We need the right amount of rain. Right. And that's that's the hard part is how do we figure out what is the right amount? Well, obviously, we have way too much rain now. So yeah. this is like going way overboard. And we can talk about this until the cars come home blue because, you know, if you've been watching our chats, mm -hmm. we always talk about what do we talk about? Global warming. Yep. So all this is what man has made. Yes. People don't believe it, but this is what it is. And uh, not going to go too much into detail on this because we've talked about it. Yeah. And we will keep talking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's our share part of the chat. We're going to talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. My name's Gloria Webb Williams. My company is Ancient Stones Nurturing Natural. I'm your all natural mineral makeup manufacturer right here in Santa Clara, California. And you know, with every season comes new colors. So the three main seasonal colors for 2024 so far is purple, which as you look around, you can tell I love and army green you know that rich 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 army green color. army green is it yeah. like army green is more like a kind of uh i thought it was army green dark green yeah it is it's it's um if you notice when they wear the fatigues there's like different shades but yes. that green is just yes. very yes. bright it's not a, a high it's not a translucent it's a very deep rich color um, colors that I have of the season are Princess Kelly, and the name is just like the color, the dress that Princess Kelly wore. Um, what I, color was that? It's a deep green. Deep green, okay. Yes. I have a uh, scarab's wing, which is a black green. I have a clover, which is a bright summery green. I have a... Um, have a color that reminds you of the of money so i call it money it's a money green so i have four to six different shades of green that you can use and the pantone color of 2024 is called fuzzy peach and what does pantone mean pantone is a manufacturer that um 
I mean peach fuzz, not fuzzy peach, peach fuzz, is a, is a um, palette manufacturer. So all the colors, when you go into a paint store, like if you go to Home Depot and they have those panels on the wall, those are Pantone colors. Mm. So you see swatches all over the place, that's Pantone. Pantone comes in uh, everyday life colors. When you go to do graphics, arts or graphics design, the thing that the artist looks up is Pantone colors. Okay. So it's something, you know, very, very popular. And like I said, I kind of misspoke. It's called Peach Fuzz, but it's a light orangey color. So when I hear of orange and green and purple, you know, and that's for right now in the, you know, the winter to spring, as we get more into the summer, some of those shades will shift. So if you're a person and you say, I, I can't wear green, there are things that you can do to still wear green. You just have to do it as a lighter color. You can do it like as an eyeliner on your eyes. You can um, take the green and you can mix it with another color to shift it a little bit. Um, you can take a brush and you could take fuzzy peach. I mean, peach fuzz. I don't know why I call it. Fuzzy peach sounds better than peach fuzz. Um, <laughs> peach take, fuzz. Take a little peach fuzz, take a little army green, kind of put them on your hands kind of together. Leave them as they are, but then take a brush and just kind of tap and then tap it on your eye. Then you'll get a combination of the peach fuzz and the army green. So you can wear the colors. What would that look like, that color together? Well, we'll just, we'll have to show you. It, it, the, the thing that I have found as a, a manufacturer of color, color can, it, it's, it's just, it's so evolutionary because there's not just, I'm a red, I'm a green, I'm a purple. You can take any color and put another color with it and make a new color. Exactly, yeah. So right. don't be afraid of color. So this is my tip for today is remember, you can play with many different colors to achieve the look that you want. Don't be afraid. Very good, thank you. I like that. Now you know those are the colors. Those are the colors. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm Rosetta Chow, and I'm a certified health coach. My business is called Simply Health. And today's health tip of the day is to eat more fatty fish. Do you know why? Hmm. You know why? Well, I know the omega-3s, but other than that, no. Okay, so fatty fish, one of the examples would be salmon. Okay. Is because it is very healthy for your brain and your heart. So what we're trying to do is not many people eat a lot of fish. Right. Especially salmon, right? right. So we want to try and encourage that because it has a lot of omega-3s, you said, mm -hmm. and what omega-3 fatty acids do is they're, an they're anti-inflammatory omega-3s. Right. So what happens is that it's great for the brain and it's also great for the heart. So omega fatty 3s come in two forms. Okay. DHA, which is for the brain, and EPA, which is for the heart. Okay. So it's gonna help reduce the decline of cognitive function, which means reduce your risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, right. and also against heart conditions. Yes. So we want to eat a lot of omega fatty three acids so that it can help our brain function. And it doesn't matter what age you are, even young kids, because my son is taking omega threes in a Excellent. form of a capsule. And we try and up our intake of all the foods that have omega fatty threes, not only fish, but nuts and seeds and walnuts, things like that. A lot of foods have omega fatty three acids. And if you want to reduce the decline of the um, risk of early dementia, eat a lot of foods that have omega fatty three acids in there. As we get older, we want to also protect our heart. So we want, if you're gonna take supplements because you don't eat enough foods with omega threes, look at the back of the label, the supplemental facts, and it will say DHA for the brain and EPA and how many milligrams of both. Right. 
So as a younger person, you want to up your intake of DHA. As an older person, up your intake of EPA. But we still need both. So that's what I say, eat your omega-3 fatty acids. So that's my health tip of the day, everyone. Rosetta Chow, I say your health matters. I love that. I love that. I mean, I have found if I find fresh salmon or I give Renee to smoke it for me, I love it. But most of the time, I don't know if people overcook it, but it's like it's dry. It doesn't really need a lot of cooking time. You know, um, salmon, you only need to put it in for about 15 minutes okay. in the oven. And it's so good because you can put any kind of seasonings on there and it will taste delicious. And did you know that salmon skin is very, very healthy for you? Didn't it know that really either. is. And one last thing, if you're pregnant ladies, take omega-3s because that will help reduce the risk of postpartum depression. Nice, nice. Well, once again, we've had a blast. We want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. We feel the love coming from you to us. We're so very, very grateful. And we send it back to you. Mwah. Bubbling Thank you. over. We really appreciate down. you watching our chats. Yes. And if you have any feedback on what we talked about, put it in the comments below. We would love to hear from you about anything we talked about. Yes. And if you watching out there, you make teas, you have a tea shop in the Bay Area, We'd love to hear about you because maybe we could come and visit your tea shop. Absolutely. Or feature your tea in a future chat that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We'd love to support our local business owners yes. or even if you're far away. Yeah. We'd love to support you. Maybe you can send us some teas. We'd like yeah. to promote your teas. Absolutely. So. And, you know, we can always do Zoom. So have no fear. No matter where you are, we can be together. Yes, we can. Thank you so much, everyone. We are Silicon Valley Girls Chat over tea. tea. And remember to always keep smiling. Bye-bye. Take care.